Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, let's make a classic Puerto Rican sandwich known as a jibarito. So let's get into it. All right, so jumping right in, I'm gonna go ahead and marinate my steak. So the cut of steak that I'm using is just thin beef steak, like for sandwiches. You can use flank steak or any cut of beef that you prefer, just make sure it's nice and thin. I'm gonna prepare my bistec. I'm sorry, I'm gonna prepare my steak as if I am making biste. Um, biste is just like a Puerto Rican stewed beef steak. I do have a video on my channel, but I use cube steak in that video. But you can prepare it however you want. If you wanna season it, add some extra virgin olive oil and then grill it on a hot cast iron skillet, you can do that. But I am just gonna uh, do it like this cause that's how I normally like to do it. That's how my mom would make it. And it's just nice and juicy and flavorful. So the Jibarito sandwich was actually created by a Puerto Rican chef in Chicago in 1996 named Juan Peter Figueroa in his restaurant called El Borinquen or Borinquen, which Borinquen is actually uh, what Puerto Rico used to be called before it got colonized by the Spaniards. That's why they call us Boricuas. Little fun fact. Anyway, so I did add like two teaspoons of white vinegar, a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Now I'm going to add this cool adobo that I found at the Puerto Rican market. They literally have every kind of adobo you can think of. <laughs> so I'm going to add about a teaspoon. Don't worry, it looks like a lot, but it's not. Feel free to add it to taste. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my fresh homemade sofrito. I have two videos on my channel on how I make sofrito. I have an authentic version, which is my very first video. And then I also have a basic version if you cannot find certain traditional ingredients, okay? So I added a little over a tablespoon of that, and then I'm gonna add a little over a tablespoon of tomato sauce. And now I'm gonna add a bit of garlic powder. I'm just eyeballing here. That was probably like a little over half a teaspoon. Ooh, gotta clean up that tomato sauce because I'm really picky. Does anyone clean as they go? Like I'll have a mess in the sink, but I try to keep my counters as clean as possible as I'm cooking. <laughs> And now I'm gonna add just a little bit of sazon. This is like probably a little less than half a packet, probably like a third of a packet of sazon. If you don't wanna use sazon, that is fine. Just use a little bit of annatto powder or paprika. You can even use a little bit of chili powder if you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a good mix until it's nice and combined. And it was a little tricky because the pieces are like so big. So it was kind of awkward, um, like rubbing all the spices and seasonings in. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and mix that up really well. And then I'm going to marinate this in the fridge um, for about half an hour. However, you can leave it marinating safely in your fridge up to two days. So after mixing everything up, I went ahead and just added the rest of the sofrito. So I ended up adding about two tablespoons of sofrito and do not worry, I always have the ingredient list in the description box below. But as always, feel free to use that list as a general guide and adjust according to your tastes and preferences. All right, and last but not least, when you thought I was done, nope, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of cumin. I'm not big on cumin. It's probably one of my least favorite spices, but I do like to add a little bit in beef because I feel like it balances the other flavors out. I don't know, I'm not a professional, guys, but um, I don't like it to taste like cumin, but it just enhances the flavor. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now and let's move on. All right, so I have my caldero here. And if you ever see me hover my hand like over a pan or a pot, it's because I'm checking to see if it's hot enough. I, I don't know. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add a good little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna let that get hot. And my caldero is over medium heat, or like medium high heat, I'm sorry. And then 
I have a gas stove so the oil gets hot really quickly. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the beef in. Again, I am preparing the steak as if I am stewing it, as if I am making stewed um, Puerto Rican steak. But again, use a cast iron skillet or any other method of cooking beef, your favorite method of cooking beef, and prepare it like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this evenly at the bottom of my caldero. And I'm basically just like sauteing the sofrito and the tomato sauce in the heat for a little bit before I add everything else. So after about two minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and just flip it over so that the other side of the steak can get nice and sauteed because I have sofrito on there. So like instead of sauteing the sofrito separately in the oil, since it's already in the steak, I just kind of like throw it all together in the pot. All right, now I'm gonna add half of a chopped green bell pepper and half of a chopped white onion. The peppers and the onions are gonna get reduced along with the beef and they're gonna taste really delicious and just make everything taste so good. And then I'm gonna add a small bay leaf. This is going to give it a good flavor as well. And I'm gonna add just enough water until it is covered. And then I'm gonna cook this until the water is reduced significantly. All right, so only five minutes have passed. That time is irrelevant. I just wanna let you know that I'm gonna go ahead and cook this for about an hour or a little over an hour, just until the steak is nice and deliciously tender, okay? And then I'm gonna make sure that I'm cooking it over like between low and medium heat. I don't want the heat too high because I don't want the water to evaporate too quickly. And then if you leave it unattended, the beef can burn. So make sure you're keeping an eye on it, checking on it like every 15 minutes. If you see that the water has reduced significantly, just add a little more water. It won't mess up your steak because all of the spices and the ingredients are simply concentrated. So by rehydrating it with water, you are good to go. All right, so we're gonna cook this again for a little over an hour until it's nice and tender. All right, so I let it cook for about an hour and a half and the beef is extremely tender. Like you can cut it with a plastic spoon. It came out so, so freaking good. And if you're not making jibaritos, you can literally follow this recipe and make on the side some white rice, some stewed pink beans, and you have yourself a whole meal. Fry yourself up some plantains, some aguacate, some salad. Yeah, you're good to go. So good. All right, so I turned off the heat for my steak and I set it to the side. Let's go ahead and prepare our plantains for the quote unquote bread part of the sandwich okay but instead of bread we are using green unripe plantains i have some pretty big plantains however i tried my best to get them all the same size i was getting like the biggest ones that i can find and i got like literally small medium and large <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good so as you can see i went ahead and i cut the ends of the plantain i made a little slit a very shallow slit down the middle and I peel the skin off. Now this has to be the easiest green plantain I have ever peeled. It was so effortless. Now the other two, not so much, but yeah, you're gonna do your best and peel the skin off of the plantains. All right, so now that the plantains are peeled and they're cut in half, I'm gonna go ahead and as evenly as possible, just slice them down the middle, okay? Don't worry about getting it perfect and be very careful because sometimes the plantain can be a little slippery. So just be very mindful when you are cutting down the middle of the plantain so you don't get so you don't get cut and you don't hurt yourself. And so I left this part here on purpose. I miscut one, but I'm really glad that this happened because if this happens to you, especially if it's the first time you've ever done this, I'm going to show you how you can fix it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fry the plantains. 
I have some vegetable oil here. My heat is set at medium and I wait until it gets nice and hot and I throw my plantains in and this is going to be the first fry because we are going to double fry these plantains to make sure they're easy to smash and make sure that they're nice and crispy. And once they are nice and golden on both sides, I'm gonna go ahead and remove them from the oil and lay them on a plate that is lined with paper towel to absorb the excess oil. And then we're gonna go ahead and smash them. So I feel like this is a part that intimidates a lot of people, but it's actually very easy. The key to getting perfectly smashed plantains is to make sure that the first fry that in the first fry, you fry your plantain really well. You wanna make sure you fry them until they're very golden. If you don't fry them enough, when you go ahead and smash them, they're gonna crumble and fall apart, okay? So make sure that you fry them really well the first time. And then all I do is I just smash them up, I flip it over until I get the desired uh, thickness or thinness that I want and desired shape. All right, so I'm kind of on a roll here. I've already smashed a whole bunch. And remember those plantains from earlier that I miscut? Again, if this happens to you, this is what you're gonna do. Very simple, you're just gonna go ahead and like lay them on top of each other. And then you're gonna use the cutting board and just smash until it's nice and thin. And you're gonna flip it over to smash the other side just to make sure that they stick together very nicely. And this is also a good method to use if you wanna make like really big tortones for dinner. <laughs> Cause that's essentially what we're making. We're just making um, large tostones because this is going to serve as the bread of our jibarito sandwich. I was using a lot of muscle strength here. <laughs> the veins on my hands were like popping up. <laughs> and see, it's like perfectly stuck together. All right, and using the same oil from earlier, I went ahead and turned my heat back on to medium. And once the oil gets hot again, I'm gonna go ahead and put my plantains in for the second fry. And depending on your stove, uh, that'll determine how long it'll take. You just wanna make sure that you fry both sides until they are nice and crispy. You may need to do this in batches if your pan is smaller than mine. I'm using here a 12 inch pan, it is very large. So I'm able to put quite a few in. Um, you just don't wanna like overcrowd it like crazy. You wanna make sure that they have their own space. My tortones are done. They came out nice and crispy. And as soon as I took them out, I went ahead and sprinkled a little bit of sea salt and some garlic powder. And before we prepare the jibaritos, I went ahead and made a really quick Puerto Rican mayu ketchup. If you know, you know. This is about half a cup of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of ketchup. I put about a teaspoon of garlic powder and a little bit of dried cilantro. You can play around with the ingredients and make it however you like, whether you want more ketchup or more mayonnaise, it's up to you. All right, let's go ahead and make the first jibarito now. Just a disclaimer, I am not the best food presenter. Again, I am not a professional. This is literally the sandwich that I'll be eating. This is my jibarito sandwich. <laughs> so I'm gonna make it um, how I like. I'm gonna add a nice generous amount of that mayu ketchup. And as always, you can play around with the ingredients, whatever you wanna put in your sandwich. It is totally up to you. I'm gonna add a nice hearty portion of that bite. You can see it's like super juicy, so good. And then I am using half a slice of American cheese. I know this is not like the most appealing cheese, but I love American cheese in a sandwich. But again, feel free to use whatever you like. You can use Swiss cheese, smoked provolone, mozzarella, etc. whatever you prefer. Then I'm gonna add some tomato slices, some onion slices, and I was feeling uh, a little healthy today. So instead of a uh, regular lettuce, I went ahead and added some spinach. <laughs> but you can use iceberg lettuce if you want like a nice crunchy lettuce in your sandwich, whatever you prefer. Then 
then I'm gonna add the other tostong, a little mayu ketchup. And look at that, so, so good. And that is all for today's video. These Hibarito sandwiches came out, oh man, so, so good. My mom was over for dinner, she loved them, my husband loved them, everybody loved them. So feel free to give it a try. And as always, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Mari. I make Puerto Rican cooking videos. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time.